Good morning. My name is Dan Kahn. I'm the executive director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And uh, very happy to be back again uh, at the Open Networking Summit. I've been uh, attending this now in both the US and Europe for the last couple years. And it uh, is really, I find, one of the most productive events. Uh, I, I like the sessions, I like the keynotes, but just the hallway tr uh, track that I have here, the people that I run into from around the world who are uh, using Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies or eager to use them and, and looking for a little bit of guidance on it has been uh, extremely productive for me. A CNCF is a part of the Linux Foundation. We are a sister organization of LF networking and LF Edge, and uh, Arpit and I have had a, a really productive collaboration over the last few years as uh, these different worlds merge together. Uh, we're best known for our project Kubernetes, which is one of the uh, largest and fastest growing open source projects ever. Uh, we actually now have six graduated projects and um, 16 incubating. These are uh, different levels of maturity and, and, and our recommendations for the world. But uh, Kubernetes sort of has a, a gravitational force around it that, um, uh, but in order to have a complete solution, a lot of these other projects are really quite valuable for things uh, like connectivity and observability and uh, storage, a lot of other areas. And then you can see here the 18 uh, platinum members that uh, help back our cloud native ecosystem. We were very pleased to add Apple as an end user platinum member uh, this summer. So uh, raise your hand for me if you've seen this uh, cloud native landscape before. Uh, yeah, about half. So uh, you can pick this up in uh, the CNCF booth outside uh, and the URL at the very top l.cncf.io uh, lets you uh, download it and actually interact with an interactive version of it. This document has been called helpful, it's been called overwhelming, it's been described as the hellscape. And um, there is, this is legitimately an absurdly complicated and uh, detailed document. I do feel like we get a lot of criticism for, uh, oh, why are you making things so complicated? And it's sort of like, uh, oh, this trail is really rocky, I'm gonna go blame the map maker. Um, where what we're doing here is legitimately trying to map out all of the different options for the different aspects of the ecosystem. But actually, we like to have this document be the backside, and the front side, we like to have the cloud native trail map. And again, this is available at l.cncf.io, and you can pick it up at our booth. This is our recommended path for enterprises to adopt a cloud native, where the very first step is to containerize, normally with Docker containers. The second step is to implement continuous integration, continuous delivery, that you need to be able to rebuild all of your software from source constantly uh, at any time. And then only step three is orchestration with Kubernetes. And then you get into the more complicated areas. So observability and analysis using things like Prometheus for monitoring, Fluentd for logging, uh, the new open telemetry product project and Jaeger for tracing and, uh, and it keeps going from there. So um, this is the path that a number of enterprises have adopted over time. And uh, you can really see that in terms of Kubernetes and uh, the search trends uh, you, on Google Trends, where uh, this has just been a spectacular level of engagement and adoption and interest over time. When we started CNCF uh, less than four years ago, it was really one of many uh, orchestration platforms and people were a little unclear around uh, how big containerization, how big cloud native was gonna be. I don't think there's a, a lot of confusion at this at this point. Another really great piece of evidence of this is that when we started uh, less than four years ago, we had three companies in our end user community. And we really appreciated their support. Uh, they're still with us, it was NCSoft from Korea, eBay and Goldman Sachs. But uh, wow, we have 115 now. And so uh, if you look at Adidas and Amadeus here in Europe, all the way up to uh, Zalando and Zendesk and uh, tons of pretty exciting folks in between. Um, now, we did define the end user community as people who uh, are making use of cloud native technologies internally, but are not selling them to their customers. So folks like 
Apple will sell you an iPhone, but they're not selling you a, a hosted Kubernetes service. Um, and so we do explicitly exclude telcos from taking part in our end user community. And this was almost just kind of a definitional issue. Um, which, but, which is why we were very excited earlier this year to launch our uh, CNF testbed. And the idea here is to compare the performance and the capabilities of virtual network functions, VNFs, to uh, what we call cloud-native network functions, or CNFs. And so to do this, we partnered with LF Networking, and we, uh, in particular, took some code, some open source code, out of ONAP, um, the uh, VBNG use case that's part of the VCPE, and uh, we packaged it as a virtual machine and ran it on OpenStack and then ran it on uh, bare metal servers from our uh, uh, a great member and, and supporter of CNCF, the bare metal hosting company Packet. Then we took the identical networking code and we packaged it as a container, ran it on Kubernetes, on the identical bare metal servers. But one of the key thoughts here is that we didn't just do this once and then publish the results. We actually created an entire open source project and uh, have all of this available on GitHub today uh, under an Apache 2.0 license that anyone is able to go replicate these results. And uh, what we've been able to show are some performance improvements and uh, some latency improvements in terms of the time it takes to spin up and how many uh, network functions you can run simultaneously uh, on a whole uh, variety of different uh, measures. And then uh, at the bottom, I want to point out this URL, github.com slash cncf slash telecom hyphen user hyphen group. This is uh, our telecom user group, or TUG, that uh, Cheryl Hung, our director of ecosystem, runs. And this was our way to engage with the networking and telecoms communities, where uh, unlike the end user community, we wanted to bring together both the vendors and uh, the telco operators and have them collaborate together. And so this has just really gotten kicked off over the last couple months, but uh, I would love to encourage you to engage with us and participate. It is open. We have uh, the first Monday of every month a call that's friendlier for uh, the West Coast of the US and Europe, and the third Monday we have a time that's friendlier for uh, Europe and Asia. And uh, we are working to uh, extend this CNF testbed and try and make uh, these use ca cases more practical. So this is just um, a quick look, and um, you can download these slides later from Sketch and take a look at it. But uh, it's showing this summer that we've been adding a number of use cases and functionality to the testbed. Uh, I'll give a quick shout out to a sandbox project uh, that's part of CNCF called the Network Service Mesh that's been uh, adding some additional functionality on top of Kubernetes that's particularly valuable for uh, these kinds of telco applications. And here are our rough plans for the next four months where we have a lot of additional functionality uh, that we're adding in. But at the big picture, if you look at really what we're aiming for with the CNF testbed over the next six months or so, there's uh, two big pieces. One is that we would like to evolve it to become actually a development platform for cloud-native network functions, for CNFs, so that as you're uh, as, uh, looking at taking your existing networking code, porting your VNF to be a CNF, that uh, rather than just running it on your own environment, uh, both telcos and their vendors would be uh, running it on the CNF testbed. And what's great is that you can get uh, an API key from Packet and you can replicate our whole environment, or you're also welcome to run this on your own bare metal infrastructure uh, that we would love to, uh, to support with you with it. And then over time, we are um, talking with the OPNFV verification program, OVP, that's part of ELF networking, to explore using the CNF testbed as a platform for certification, where we do have an aspiration here that uh, CNFs can actually be even more interoperable than I, I think a lot of the goals were with VNFs, that you should be able to have CNFs CNFs from multiple different vendors running on platforms from other vendors. So uh, I'll finish by saying if you are interested in uh, cloud native and adopting some of these technologies, looking at how they can be valued to you, uh, this is a good conference. Please also consider coming to KubeCon Cloud Native Con. We're going to be in San Diego on November 18th. 
uh, and we are going to actually have the largest open source developer conference uh, ever. We're expecting more than 12,000 people to attend that. We're then going to be uh, back here in Europe in Amsterdam, a uh, short train ride away uh, on March 30th. We'll be back in China in uh, Shanghai, July 28th for KubeCon, Cloud Native Con Open Source Summit, and then uh, Boston. And I'll just finish with um, a look at the, when you talk about the level of engagement and excitement around uh, Cloud Native, four years ago, we had uh, just a, about 500 people at the first KubeCon event in, uh, in San Francisco. And uh, that's grown to now be 23,000 developers uh, from across our three different events here in 2019. And uh, at some point, we're going to hit peak KubeCon and, and, and uh, go down, but we don't think we're quite there yet, and there's no sign yet that uh, 2020 will be that point. So I hope many of you and your colleagues uh, will be able to attend our events either in uh, US or Europe or China. And um, please do feel free to grab me at the break and I, I would love to talk about uh, any of these areas. Thank you very much.